Chapter 3, Section 3 is about solving equations when we have variables on both sides. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve equations with variables on both sides and identify equations that are identities or have no solutions. So let's start off with an easy one. Remember our goal is to get d by itself. And right now we have negative 6 d's on the left side and 1 d on the right side. So what I'm going to do is take that d that's on the right side and just move it over. Because it's a positive 1d, we can just subtract d from both sides. So if you have negative 6 minus 1 more, we end up with negative 7d equals 4. And then all we have to do is divide both sides by negative 7. And we end up with d equals negative 4 sevenths. And we can just leave it like that. No need to break out a calculator and actually do... Um, that in decimal form. So now the next one, a little more complicated because we have that parenthesis there with the number on the outside. So what we have to do first is simplify the left. So we're going to use what we learned the night before and distribute. So we end up with 2c minus 12 equals 9c plus 2. Now remember our goal, we want to get d by itself, or c by itself. So what we have to do is get all of our C's on one side and all of our numbers on the other. And it doesn't matter, whatever side you want to put them on. So I'm going to move all of my C's over to the left side. So I have nine C's here. I'm going to subtract them to move them this way. So they go away from the right side. And two minus nine will give me negative seven C. I still have that minus 12 there. My equal sign's still there. And then the only thing I have on the right side is a two. So now this looks like problems we've solved. All my C's are together, so I want to get all my numbers together. So let's add 12 to both sides. And I get negative 7C equals 14. And now divide by negative 7. This crosses off, and we get C is a negative 2. And remember, just like any other one we've done, you can take that answer and plug it back in and make sure that it works. Let's do a couple more. This one's a little different because we only have variables on the right side. So it wouldn't make sense to subtract 3m from both sides to put it over here because then we would end up with 0 on this side. And I know a lot of people are always tempted to do that to get the m's on the other side. But we would end up doing a little more work because we'd have to add 5 to both sides and then divide by 2. So instead, what we can notice is that there's only m's on this side. So let's make only numbers on the other. So let's move this m. Because it's just a positive m, I'm going to subtract it. And that leaves me negative 5 equals 2 m's. And then we can divide both sides by 2. That crosses off, and we get that m equals negative 5 halves. And if you want, you could write it as negative 2.5, but no need to think through that. Try this next one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and make sure that you can get the correct answer for k. So I got that k is 10. I moved all of my k's over to the left and all of my numbers over to the right. And then I had to divide by 2 to get k all alone. So if you did not get this, go and trace through my steps. Chances are it was just a negative sign somewhere that got you a little off. All right, the second part, no solutions and identities. All of the equations that we've been solving up to this point have one solution. They have a number. When we get done with the problem, we see something like this, m equals negative 5 halves or k equals 10. We get an answer. But that doesn't happen all the time. So an equation has no solution if no value makes the equation true. Remember, when we have an equal sign like this, we're just saying whatever's on the left has to be the same value as whatever's on the right. So sometimes it's impossible to get those two values the same, and then we say that they're not equal or there's no solution. So this equation right here, 2x equals 2x plus 1, has no solution because it doesn't matter what you plug in for x, this right here makes it not equal to that every single time. So an equation is true for every value when it's an identity. 
The equation 2x equals 2x is an identity because it doesn't matter what you plug in. You're getting the exact same thing on both sides no matter what. So chances are this will look familiar if you remember solving systems last year. If you go to solve something and you end up with a true statement like 10 equals 10 or 7 equals 7 or 14 equals 14, you get something that's true. That means it doesn't matter what you plug in for your variable, it's always going to be true. And this is an identity. Or we say that it has infinitely many solutions. Because literally every number on the planet works. Sometimes you'll end up with something that looks like this, like negative 5 equals 7. This is not true. Negative 5 can never equal 7 under any circumstances. So when you get something like this, this has no solutions. So your options when you solve are you can have one solution, and it's going to look like what we're used to, x equals 3. You can have infinitely many solutions when you get a true statement like 10 equals 10, and you can have no solutions when you get something like negative 5 equals 7, when you get something that's not true. So determine whether each equation is an identity or whether it has no solution. So you just start solving it just like you would any other problem. So what I'm going to do, I have n's on both sides. I'm going to move them all to the left. So let's subtract 5n's from both sides. Hopefully your brain's working, and something happens. All of our ends get crossed off. And on the left, I'm left with 9. And on the right, I'm left with negative 1. So I get this statement, 9 equals negative 1. And this can never, ever, ever happen. So that means, because this is not true, that I have no solutions. It doesn't matter what I plug in for that n up there. It's never going to be true, because one of them you're multiplying by 5 and then subtracting 1. The other one, you're multiplying by 5 and then adding 9. So it doesn't matter what you plug in. Those are not the same. So the next one, keep doing what we're doing. The left side's totally simplified, so I'm just going to leave that. But the right side, we got to combine some terms. 7 minus 2 is going to give us 5x plus 9. Hopefully your brain's already working because the same kind of thing's going to happen. Move my x's over. And again, all of my x's get crossed off. But I'm left with 9 equals 9. And this is always true, no matter what. It doesn't matter what I plug in for x, because if you look, my x's got crossed off. So this will always be true. This is an identity. And that means that there's infinitely many solutions. And that's it. So you should be able to solve this equation right here. And you should be able to answer when does an equation have no solutions, when would it have one solution, and when would it have infinitely many solutions. Make sure you write down any questions you have and we can answer them in class tomorrow. Have a good night.